Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve problem number 13 under the topic Nyquist plot. To know the procedure of how to solve a problem using Nyquist plot, I had made a video. I will give the link in the description. Kindly watch it. The problem is for g of s h of s is equal to some transfer function is given. Draw the Nyquist plot. Comment on the stability. So a transfer function is given. We have to finally conclude whether the system is stable or unstable. So the first step is we have to find the number of poles that are lying on the right hand side of S plane. So the denominator terms are known as poles and the numerator terms are zeros. Here there are no zeros only we are having three poles. right? So now we are going to find the value of the poles. So I am equating these three terms to zero. So the value of poles are 0, minus 4 and another one is 1. So here this is our S plane right. So this is our real axis and this is our imaginary axis. So when you locate you see we are having one pole at origin and another one is S is at minus 4 and another one is S equal to 1 right. So the poles which lie on the right hand side of S plane is only we are having one pole. So number of poles lying on the right half of S plane is equal to 1. Right. And the next step is finding the number of encirclements. So the formula is given by Z minus P. So Z is number of zeros lying on the right hand side of S plane and P is number of poles lying on the right hand side of S plane. So when you look back here. So in the given problem there are no zeros. See we are having uh, no s plus term on the numerator part. So the value of zeros is nothing here. So it is 0. So 0 minus 1 gives you minus 1. So the point minus 1 plus 0 j should be encircled only once in clockwise direction. Right the negative sign indicates clockwise direction and the number indicates the number of encirclements. Right. Now we are going to draw the rough Nyquist plot that is our step 3. So again when you look back at the problem you see here we are having a pole at origin. Right. Whenever if you have a pole at origin then our Nyquist plot should be drawn like this. That is the pole the origin should not be covered by our Nyquist plot. And this Nyquist plot in x axis real term and in y axis imaginary term right and this Nyquist plot is divided into totally four sections. So this is our section 1 it starts at plus j infinity and ends at plus 0 and this is our section 2 it starts at plus 0 and ends at minus 0 and this is our section 3 it starts at minus 0 and ends at minus j infinity and finally this is our section 4 it starts at minus j infinity and ends at plus j infinity right step 4 is finding the expression for magnitude and phase angle so the first step is we have to replace s by j omega so here it is done and to find the magnitude we have to take square root as well as we have to square the terms so here omega right and here omega square plus 4 square and here omega square plus minus 1 the whole square so that becomes plus 1 here right next the expression for phase angle is this omega contributes an angle of 90 degrees and we are moving this denominator term to the numerator so a minus has to be included so minus 90 degree and again here for this term minus tan inverse of omega divided by 4 right and here when you look at this term this is quite different we are going to locate this term on the s plane so here when you locate this term that is j omega minus 1 is nothing but this is min equal to minus 1 plus j omega right both are same you see minus 1 so here minus 1 and here plus j omega here again plus j omega so when you mark this point it occupies the second quadrant right so here whenever you are having a point on second quadrant the formula here is here you have to the way of expressing this j omega minus 1 is 180 degree minus tan inverse of this omega divided by 1 
right again this is a denominator term when i move this to the numerator so here i will be having minus of 180 degree minus tan inverse of omega right so here when i move this negative sign inside what happens minus 90 minus tan inverse of omega by 4 and here minus 180 degree and minus into minus becomes plus tan inverse of omega right so this is our expression for phase angle and in section 1 again we are going to analyze so in section 1 the starting point is plus infinity and ending point is plus 0 so this is our section 1 right it starts at plus infinity and it ends at plus 0 now substitute the value of infinity in magnitude so anything divided by infinity is 0 so here we are having 0 and again substitute infinity in the phase angle expression right so this is our phase angle expression so tan inverse of infinity becomes 90 degree and here tan inverse of infinity again 90 right and this minus 90 and this plus 90 cancels each other and finally we will be having minus 270 degrees so here i had written that one right and the next step is substitute omega equal to 0. So here when you substitute the value of omega as 0, anything divided by 0 is infinity. So here infinity. Again when you substitute omega as 0, tan inverse of 0 is 0. Right. This term becomes 0 and this term becomes 0. And again the final angle is minus 270 degrees. Right. Now when you subtract these two terms, minus 270, minus of minus 270. So, minus 270 plus 270 becomes 0 degrees, right. And next we are going to analyze our section 2. So, it starts at plus 0 and it ends at minus 0. So, here omega, when we substitute omega as plus 0, just now we had find it out, right. It is infinity minus 270 degrees. So, just directly substitute here. And when you substitute omega as minus 0, right, what happens here? Consider this expression, right. When you substitute 0, again this term becomes 0 and this term becomes 0. Since at this point, our Nyquist plot crosses the origin, right. So here what happens? This minus 90 degree becomes plus 90 degree here. So here we are writing it as plus 90 0 and here minus 180 so the final answer is minus 90 degrees right when you subtract these two terms what happens minus 90 degree plus 270 degree gives plus 180 degree that is anti-clockwise direction we have to rotate the plot in anti-clockwise right section 3 is it is nothing but the mirror image of section 1 and section 4 analysis is not needed and step 5 is rationalizing. It is nothing but taking complex conjugate of the denominator terms. So here I am having 3 terms right. I have to take complex conjugate for these 3 terms. So minus j omega and here j omega plus 4 right. So therefore 4 minus j omega here right. Just assume here we can write this one as 4 plus j omega right. So 4 minus j omega. And here I can write this term as minus 1 plus j omega. So here the complex conjugate is minus 1 minus j omega. Here we are multiplying and dividing. Right. The next thing is we are just doing multiplication. So when you compare these denominator terms you see this is of the format a plus b and this is of the format a minus b. So a plus b into a minus b is nothing but a square minus b square. So here when you solve this, we will be getting the answer as omega square plus 16. And again, when you solve these two terms, here the answer will be 1 plus omega square. And when you multiply this j omega with minus j omega, that will give you omega square. Right. And the next thing is, again, here the numerator terms are getting multiplied. And after multiplying, you see here, again, we are doing simplification right just we are combining the terms by doing multiplication so again just multiply and after multiplying you see we are having the final answer like this right the next thing is we have to equate the imaginary terms to zero so here the imaginary terms are this term this term divided by this term right because the denominator is common for both the imaginary terms as well as the real terms so when you equate this to 0, you see this is our expression. 
So when you move this denominator term to the right hand side, that becomes 0, right? And again, once you solve this expression, here the value of this omega square is 4 and the value of omega is 2. Now we are going to substitute this omega square value in real terms. So in this expression, what is the real term? 50 omega square minus 200 omega square divided by this term. Omega square into omega square plus 16 into omega square plus 1. So once you substitute the value of omega square and you solve and finally the value of QE is found to be minus 1.5, right? QE is nothing but intersection of the Nyquist plot on the negative real axis. Now we are going to draw our final Nyquist plot. So these are all the values of section 1 and section 2. So while drawing Nyquist plot, we will always start with 0 degree. When you move clockwise, the angles are negative, right? You see here, minus 90, minus 180, minus 270. When you move in anticlockwise, the angles are positive. So plus 90, plus 180 and plus 270 degrees, right? So here, we start at 0 minus 270. So this is my minus 270 degree line and, it's, and here we are starting at origin. Where it is getting entered, it ends at infinity at the same line, right? So here we are starting and here we are ending here, right? So this is our section 1, right? Here there is uh, no rotation, so just draw it, that's it. Then when you look at our section 2 analysis, it starts at minus 270 degree line at infinity. So this is the point, right? So it is rotated 180 degree in anticlockwise. So here we are drawing 180 degree, that is we are covering two quadrants in anticlockwise. And here where it is getting entered, minus 90 degree line, infinity. So this is my minus 90 degree line. So here it gets entered, right? And section three, it is nothing but mirror image of section one right so here it is drawn in dotted lines since we know this direction this anti-clockwise direction we are following the same throughout the Nyquist plot right just now tell me whether the system is stable or unstable according to step number two what is the value of n here the value of n is found to be minus one right but here, you see whether can we tell anything from this Nyquist plot? Because you see there is no Q point here. But whereas we are having the value of Q as the value of Q is found to be minus 1.5. But there is no perfect intersection point in this Nyquist plot. Right. So therefore the system is said to be unstable. Am I making the concept clear? The number of encirclement should be minus 1 for the system to be stable. But here we are having no perfect intersection point. Only if we have an intersection point, we can analyze the encirclements, right? Whether the point minus 1 is lying inside or outside like that. But here there is no such case condition available. So finally, we are concluding that the system is unstable, right? So here comes the end of the problem. If you have any doubt, let me know in the comment section. Thank you.